start the day off this morning, brethren. We're going to be looking at something that correlates perfectly with Brother Gibbons' excellent lesson on Friday night about Abraham's trying of faith. I'm going to be looking at multiplying and tribulation. My text is Job chapter 42 and verses 10 through 12. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters, and all they that had been his acquaintance before. And they did eat bread with him in his house, and they bemoaned and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than he had his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 she-asses. And to, to get a feel of what this text means, I'm going to read it out of a, a few more different versions. The New International NIV says, After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord made him prosperous again and gave him twice as much as he had before. All his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him before came and ate with him in his house. They comforted and consoled him over all the trouble that the Lord had brought upon him, and each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. And the Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the first. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a yoke of oxen, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. The New American Standard Bible, NASAB, NASB says, and the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord increased all that Job had twofold. Then all his brothers and all his sisters and all who had known him before came to him. And they ate bread with him in his house. And they consoled him and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought on him. And each one gave him a piece of money and each a ring of gold. And the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning, and he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. Finally, the new King James. The Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then all his sisters, all his brothers, all his sisters, and all those who had been his acquaintance before came to him and ate food with him in his house, and they consoled him and comforted him for all the adversity that the Lord had brought upon him. Each one gave him a piece of silver and each a gold ring. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. Now the definition of tribulation is a time of afflictions as a result of things that are contradictory. Now related words are also bountiful, some of which are Trial, affliction, oppression, and one I really like is Calvary. Like you're putting your will on the cross. The, the trial hurts. And tribulations, trials are, giving, are given according to the situation a person is in. If he's weak, then a trial can make him strong. If he's proud, a trial can make him humble. And if he's doubtful that God is overall, a trial can make him rooted and grounded, steadfast in the faith. There are a number of things that trials can come for. Now, God gives us trials so we can be strong in places that we're weak. They give us knowledge and we can be able to withstand greater things because our strength is made greater because of these trials. When you get a lot of things bearing down on you, you are made stronger. Now, when you lift weights, your muscles are torn. And when they heal, they're stronger because of the strain put on them. And the more strain you put on them, the stronger they will be. Uh -huh. And I'd like to read a text in Hebrews chapter 6, verse, Hebrews chapter 12, excuse me, verses 6 and 7 that illustrates this picture. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? And from this, we can see when God gets new recruits, so to speak, they have to be strong for what they will soon endure. We gain many things 
in tribulation and some of them are strength, which we've already talked about, determination, self-control, wisdom, humility, and ears to hear in the assembly so we can take advantage of the gathering of ourselves together. Amen. I'd like to read another text in James 1, chapter 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. The reason that James said this was because trials are all different lengths. We have to, we have to be able to, to always watch so that we can see the door of escape that comes with every trial, no matter when or where it comes. And my next and last point is that we come out of trials without the smell of smoke on our clothes. Isn't this good? The grace of God is with us, and we come out of the trial with not, we aren't scathed. If you recall Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were thrown into the fiery furnace, King Nebuchadnezzar made it seven times harder than it originally was. And the men who throw them in, because it was so hot, died. And yet, miraculously, these three men came, came out with not even the smell or trace of smoke and fire on their clothes. We, too, can come out of, of trials without being hurt or scathed. Let us remember Romans chapter 8, verse 28. This is a very common, common text. And we know all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Now let's read in between the lines and come up with another verse. Christ will not put anything on us that we cannot bear. We can encourage, uh, we can encourage each other with this, brethren. With trials and tribulations, we are multiplied by God. I'll have a prayer for Brother Ricky before he comes for the class.